But I entitled our message this morning because I'm going to be reading some scriptures that talks about time. It's a matter of time. We've all used that expression before, haven't we? It's a matter of time. Uh, we always uh, wonder sometimes when the Lord's going to take care of some things, but He's on schedule. <laughs> it's a matter of His time, isn't it? We're not going to monkey with his time. We're going to change our clocks, basically. But since we're doing that, I'm going to talk about some things that Solomon spoke about, about time. So we'll be rolling our clocks back. I don't know about y'all, but I've got a couple of clocks uh, that have the, where it's supposed to change automatic. But somehow or another, it got off, and we never know, Linda and I, when we look at the clocks, if it changed, because it doesn't go by, when we get the papers go by, it just changes. It goes to another uh, time. And right now, uh, at least, for right now, it's okay. But if we try to roll it back, I don't think you can do it. <laughs> but in the, the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon the wise man wrote these words, guided by God's hand, and God gave it to us. And there's something to learn throughout God's Word, but there's something to learn from every passage of Scripture. The Lord didn't just write this book to fill up a book. He said what He meant, meant what He said, and I believe there's some significance. When I get to read some of these genealogies sometimes, I wonder, now Lord, <laughs> what can I do with that? Well, He gave it to us to use. But this morning we're going to be talking about time. If you would, on your paper, Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heavens. There's a time to be born And a time to die. Time to plant. And a time to pluck up that which was planted. And a time to kill. And a time to heal. A time to break down. And a time to build up. A time to weep. And a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. There's a time to get, and a time to lose. Time to keep, and a time to Cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. And we'll read this next portion of Scripture, 2 Corinthians 6, verse 2. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. 
or the time of salvation. But as we read, Solomon said there is a time to every purpose under the heavens. There was, there was a time that sin entered in. As sin remains. But because that sin entered, it necessi necessitated a time for the price of sin to be paid. And we know well who paid that price. We didn't have to pay it, did we? A precious price. Promised by God himself. When Adam and Eve sinned, and God had the conversation with them in the garden and with Satan, God said that Satan was going to bruise the heel of the seed of the woman. And the seed of the woman, of course, was our Lord and Savior. But our Lord and Savior was going to bruise the head of the serpent, of the Lucifer, the man of sin. Or for the personification of sin. He's going to be put out of business. And the Lord fulfilled his promise some 1980 years ago. The place called Calvary. Our Lord sent his son to take our place. He shed his precious blood for our sins. But Solomon said that there was a time to be born, first of all. Now we had no say about this. Did we? I saw a few weeks ago on the news where some guy I'd call him a wise guy, dumb, had sued his parents for bringing him into the world without his permission. <laughs> you ever thought about that one? <laughs> sued his parents for bringing him into the world without his permission. That takes the cake. Here God bestows upon a person the precious possession of life that embraces everything. And a man to come up with that, blame his parents for getting him here. No, we had no say about being born. We were born a sinner, were we not? We can blame that on Adam and Eve. They did it, didn't they? But because of what they did, there came the time to die. Now, had they not taken of the forbidden fruit, and had they taken of the life tree, they would have lived forever. But there is a time to die. It's an appointment we can't escape. Rich, poor, 
free, bond. It doesn't matter. It's an appointment that we're going to keep. But thank the Lord. The Lord's going to put that enemy of death down. The Bible says it's the last enemy to be defeated, that thing of death. And of course, death means separation. But we must prepare for that time. And the scriptures that I included there in 2 Corinthians 6, for he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Folks, salvation is the most serious thing about life. And you have to get it right. But Solomon said there was a time to plant and a time to pluck up. And folks, we are all planting something. That being the case, that's what we're going to pluck up. Or whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. As I heard a preacher of old say, people are sowing bad seed, hoping for a crop failure. But folks... <laughs> The Lord said, Be not deceived. God's not mocked, for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. But verse 4 says, There's a time to weep. And, folks, as bad as it hurts, there comes a time of weeping, doesn't it? One we can't get around. None of us here today that at some time or another hadn't had the, the message, hey, you just lost a loved one. One way or another. Be a grandparent or whatever the case. You've had a time of sorrow, haven't you? But there's a time also to laugh. That's what we enjoy the most, isn't it? It's a time to mourn and a time to dance. Several years ago, Baptists especially didn't believe in dancing. And a certain kind of dance I don't believe in today. <laughs> but I know Baylor used to have a Baylor University had a, a negative on dancing. <laughs> Can you imagine that? And look what all has transpired in a, this generation that Baylor has gone through. Somebody said, well, David danced before the Lord. He did when God gave him victory. You remember his wife looked out the window and she hated him because she saw him praising the Lord and dancing. He wasn't dancing with a bunch of heathen women. Y'all forgive me, but he, <laughs> he, he was dancing because he was happy. Linda and I danced last night when the Astros won. <laughs> At least we had some joy, didn't we? <laughs> but if I was going to dance, that would be who I'd be dancing with. But the Lord said there, there's a time to get in verse 6 and a time to lose. Well, 
we have to have things in life. You get some things that you can't keep. I was preparing this message and I, I got under conviction myself. It says, there's a time to keep and a time to cast away. And let's all be honest this morning. How much stuff have we kept over a period of time that we need to throw away? Boy, <laughs> I still got stuff set up in my office from the job that I retired from in 07. That, that 12 years ago. And I haven't gone through my office stuff and I need to because it, it's going to burn up anyway. But how many of us are guilty about collecting stuff that we don't need? We all are, aren't we? Linda, you don't remind me of that now. <laughs> I do. I, it's going to take me a week when I start. But then verse 7 is so important. Said there was a time to keep silence and a time to speak. I get amused sometimes, at least it got amusing to me over a lifetime. People going into a funeral home and looking at a corpse or body where a person used to live and no longer live there but they'll walk in and well he looks just like himself who's he supposed to look like <laughs> it's better just to be silent isn't it I'll tell you all one, I don't have time to message it, that a seminary professor told me some years ago, but, but I, I'll tell you all that uh, when, when I've got more time. It, it's a good story, and it was and it's a church, church story. But folk, we need to get rid of some things, and that could be in a number of ways. But there's a time... To listen and then there's a time that we must speak every question doesn't deserve an answer the Lord said avoid foolish and unlearned questions avoid them But last of all, I want to, uh, on verse 8, where I want to spend the next few minutes. A time to love and a time to hate. The scripture says, God is love. Also in Hebrews it says God is a consuming fire. Amen. But folks, guess what life and, and God's about is about love. Love is not some action, but it's made up of actions. Our Lord said there were two commandments. And that first one, we should love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our mind or all of our being. Because, folks, He is life, the source of life. So, folks, the most important thing is that we love God. 
In the second commandment, he said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Means love each other. And folks, guess what? Again, the essence of God is love. And then he said, There's a time to hate. Who and what are we to hate? We know the answer, don't we? Sin is make, made up of a three-syllable word. Self-ishness. The word ish in Hebrew means man. Man. 